Hey everybody, welcome to today's vlog. A uh, quick message before you're about to watch the footage I have for you. Um, when you're making videos on the spur of the moment and you kind of have one shot to do something in that video and you screw it up, you sometimes don't realize you're not gonna think of the best things to say until uh, after you're watching the footage of your screw up. So what you're about to see was me attempting and succeeding at some point in demonstrating how the JFJ Easy Pro Disc Resurfacer works, specifically in this video for GameCube games, which I had just received the adapter in order to do uh, those in the mail today. I was anxious to do it. I had a couple of Simpsons games that I had bought quite some time ago, super cheap, that have gone up in value, maybe like 40 to 60 bucks a piece. The thing is that this did play very well, uh, no issues, but they looked horrible. So I did want to make them look better before I sent it. And unfortunately, the first one I attempted to do in the video, I actually destroyed. And I was like, well, I guess we're not going to do this video. And then I was like, you know what? This is the realistic side of reselling. You are going to make mistakes. Sometimes they're cheap. Sometimes they're a little more expensive. And uh, I'd rather show you exactly how I screwed up and then how I did it right the next time so you can learn from my mistakes. So if you're interested in getting a JFJ Easy Pro, uh, you have an idea of what to expect and what to do. So I'm uh, going to cobble together what I have in footage and hopefully it's informative. And I guess really if there's one word to describe today's destruction of Simpsons games, it's... Go! Hey everybody, good evening, Mike here. Uh, this is a very impromptu video. I was about to resurface some Nintendo GameCube discs with my JFJ Easy Pro uh, disc resurfacer. And I thought I would actually demonstrate the process because a lot of people ask questions about these. How do you use it? Took me a while to buy one. Um, I'm glad I finally did. I actually had quite a bit of media built up that needed to be resurfaced to the point where just fixing a few of those discs once I got it paid for the entire unit. Uh, and I actually have about three GameCube games sitting here. Today we're going to be looking at, uh, we've got two copies of Simpsons Hit and Run and one of Road Rage, or maybe vice versa. Nope, two of Hit and Run, one of Road Rage. Now these are going up in value right now. I think I paid a buck fifty a piece uh, for the games. One actually had two in it when I bought it, so really paid less than that. Um, but I'm going to resurface those so I can get them sold. And let me go ahead and take you off of here. All right, so here we go. Here's the unit in question. Here's my JFJ Easy Pro. Move it over here so you can see it a bit easier. Um, basically, you can see on side, this is where the disc resurfacing pads go. Uh, I already have the GameCube attachment put on this unit. Uh, it's something separate you have to buy. This is the standard piece that comes in it. So obviously, this is for your normal DVDs, CDs, and uh, video game size discs. When you buy the kit, it's basically just the additional piece. And somewhere here we have hiding is the wrench to remove it. So that was a pretty simple process. And then what we also have here is the buffing compounds we're going to use. The white one is for doing the resurfacing. The blue one is a polish and buffing compound at the end that gives the disc that nice kind of like looks like new shine and also supposedly gives it a protection against other scratches, kind of like a waxing type of a deal. So inside the unit, and you can see this is pretty dirty. You don't have to clean this. Um, it, I do when it gets a bit gummy. So I'm gonna be going ahead and put this back on the stand and try and get a good angle. But we're gonna be installing the pad on here and we're gonna be putting the uh, compounds on each surface. And then the one thing I wanna show you too is on a JFJ Easy Pro, you have these four settings, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, one minute, two minutes. Those are the buffing times. And I will tell you, as the instructions say, for a lot of these things, you really don't need to do more or want to do more than the one minute buffing cycle because I actually tested this out in the beginning when I first got it with some uh, Xbox 360 games that I had, one that was like massively scratched up but still played. I just wanted to see how it looked and I gave it maybe two or three resurfacing before I even buffed it to the point where the game wouldn't work anymore. I just basically rubbed off the entire data layer. As I showed you, we put the GameCube uh, pad on there already, or the GameCube holder on there. Now this does have a white screw-on locking nut. So we are gonna take the first game. We got the Simpsons hit and run, and I don't think you can really see how bad this is. Let me see, you can kind of see there. I think you're seeing some of that at least on the side here. So we are gonna go ahead and put that on here. And we are gonna lock it in place. Now once the disc is on there, uh, these do come with brand new pads, and I recommend 
when you're using the pads, you want to keep them in a baggie or something when you're done because you don't want them to dry out. Generally, the first time you use the discs, they want you to put a lot of a gel around the whole thing so it absorbs in there. What you'll do normally in the future is you're going to put one dollop here and one dollop here, about a quarter size, and just kind of use like a, a Q-tip or a, uh, a toothpick and you just make it about a quarter size on each. So when it spins around, it basically smears it around the whole disc for you. Now, uh, the instructions do say something a little bit different for game cubes. You can see in the picture here, they want you to kind of put a layer around the whole thing on the outside. So again, this is my first time doing a GameCube one, so hopefully we don't screw it up, but we're gonna see. So the white one, as I said, the white compound is, you wanna call it the resurfacing compound. So we're gonna go ahead and put a layer right around. I kind of smeared it a bit, but basically you get the idea. This is just a, a Velcro base. Can I use the word Velcro? Will I get a Vero attack for that? Basically we got it in there. We got the disc set up on here. It does say specifically on the uh, instructions, buffing time for GameCube games is one minute with each compound. So go ahead and close this down. We're gonna hope for the best. I'm always a little bit nervous the first time I do this. Power, power it up, fire in the hole, and one minute, here we go. All right, and finished. Let's put you down gently. Let's open this up and take a look. And well, let me bring you guys over again. Um, sometimes too, you'll see you have residual stuff around the disc. Uh, they do give you a microfiber cloth, which I have in this bag, uh, which you can use uh, any microfiber cloth to clean it off. But if you're gonna do the uh, buffing compound as well, they say don't wipe it off in between. Just go ahead and swap out the pad. And let me show you something. If you remember just seeing the pad, I actually think maybe I have this on a little bit too tight. Can you see on the pad now, there's already like an inner ring. You can see where it starts to wear down. Um, and that's actually worn down quite a bit. It's interesting. So I may have to loosen it up a little bit. You don't want to push it too hard onto the pad because you don't want to basically destroy uh, too much of the surface of a disc. There's a finite number of times you can resurface something before you basically ruin the uh, readability. So we're going to put this one aside for a second. We're going to keep that stored safe. And now we're going to take the other pad and basically going to do the exact same thing with the blue compound, just gonna put a thin layer. You know what, eh, that's not the best, but I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna close it again. I'm not gonna make you watch this again, but obviously you can see now we got the blue, the blue gunk going around everything on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and test the game. Now the funny thing is with this game, is it actually worked as scratched up as it was. All of these work so far but I, they're not in a condition I felt comfortable selling or asking a full price for them. So that's why I decided to do this as well. And I'm hoping we did this the right way the first time and it just loads up and plays just fine. And we'll be listing those and I bet they probably sell uh, within the next 24 hours. Can I give you a close up again? You know, it's always hard to show the photos of a uh, uh, disc scratch this time with the lighting. And it's interesting too, if you look at the pad, that one did not get cut down nearly as much as the other but you can see how it kind of spread the blue gel um, all around into the pad. And that's why you want to keep these things in baggies because you don't want them to dry up and get crusty because then your pad is uh, ruined. I think these were about $10 a piece. I think for the GameCube adapter, it's about, if you go from the JFJ Easy Pro website, it's about $15 for the uh, GameCube adapter. I paid $10 a piece for the pads. And one thing I'll be honest, they charged $10 for shipping saying it was FedEx home delivery. And uh, they actually came, yeah, it came first class mail. This is probably about not even 10 or 12 ounces, so under uh, a one pound weight, but whatever. It's their right to charge. It's like it's our right to charge, but we want to for shipping. And the buyer agrees to it. That's all there is to it. So now we're just gonna wipe off the disc. All you gotta do is just wipe it. You don't wanna use your shirt or your tissues or anything like that. You just did all that work to get it nice and new looking, and you wanna make sure that you uh, don't put scratches back on it. Let's go ahead, let me take you over to my testing station, and uh, we'll pop in the disc and make sure it works. 
So this is my testing station. I've kind of showed it in previous videos, but I've been recently adding to it. Uh, some of these are my old systems. Some are ones that I've picked up at a Goodwill. I use these all for testing. Got an Xbox, a PS2, a Wii, a GameCube. I have a stereo system where I run cables up to a switch box or have them hanging directly out and labeled so I know what, which input is what. We got you know a microphone input, uh, normal RCA input, and I think I was actually testing this unit here. Yeah, you know, the tape input or the uh, CD input. So basically I can just pop this on and uh, test whichever input I need. And it's super simple, barely an inconvenience. So let's open this guy up. We're gonna need a controller from the controller bin. Just got a generic GameCube controller here. We're gonna plug that in. I'm gonna pop in the disc. Oh, yeah, this, this is why I use this one because the eject button kind of sticks. So it's not one I'm gonna sell. Just gotta get it closed. Works fine for testing, turn it on. And then up here I have this monitor that I got from Goodwill uh, a while back. It's actually really cool. I paid 13 bucks for it. It's got HDMI component, RCA inputs, uh, VJ monitor. So that was a great find. Um, has built-in speakers too. All right, you know I like to be honest with you guys. Uh, I'm not here just to to look how easy things are. I screwed up. Uh, if you remember, I showed you how much that brand new pad got eaten away. Um, I think I had the lug nut, whatever you want to call it, on way too tight and or loose or improperly on the unit because the disc started to boot up and then kept saying could not read. Wiped it down again, tried it again, could not read. I think I destroyed the disc. So I also mentioned I did happen to have two copies uh, in that one box of Simpsons Hit and Run. So what you see in the machine right now is the second one. Uh, I went ahead and did the buffing process on it, but I did both the, the buffing, I'm sorry, the resurfacing and the buffing, and I did them at 20 seconds each. So if you look at it, you can see hopefully in the light, there, there is actually, uh, looks about as good as the other one did with the total of two minutes, which destroyed the disc. This was only 20 seconds each for a total of 40 seconds. So let me put you down for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the unit and let's try it out together and see what happens. Here we go, we're gonna open this up. There's the copy of the first one I did that got destroyed. Pop this guy in, close that down, power it up. See what happens. Now it did start to load last time too. And like I said, here's the weird thing. These discs did work as scratched up as they were, but the way they looked, I wouldn't buy them if I was a possible customer on eBay, so I wanted to make them look better. There we go. That's exactly where the last one said could not read discs. So, um, well, I guess it's not going to become a gaming channel for a minute. Uh, I'm definitely going to try it out. Um, all right, looks good so far. Let me go ahead and play it for a few moments, and I'll report back to you. All right, I've been playing a little bit so far, loading different modes of the game. It seems to be working okay. Uh, biggest thing with game discs is you never know. If there's going to be an error on the disc, it could occur somewhere hours into gameplay. Uh, but that first disc I screwed up didn't even make it past the load-up screen. So uh, feel good about this. Like I said, this was working to begin with. So I'm going to say this was a success uh, and a, a lesson well learned. It might have been about a $40 lesson learned, but uh, now I know. All right, so there's today's lesson in how to and how not to use your JFJ Easy Pro disc resurfacer. Really quick, uh, off camera in between the original ending of this video and this I'm recording, I did try and uh, well, what happened was I popped out the disc from that was working and it said, you know, please insert this to continue the game. And I said, I wonder what would happen if I put in that first disc again. I put it in, sure enough, it would read from that point and would load other parts of the game. So I thought maybe the disc was actually still scratched. Maybe I missed something. Maybe it just didn't surface well. I could do it again for 20 seconds. Tried it again uh, in the resurfacer, put it back in the machine. Same problem. Not going to futz with it anymore. It's okay. Um, I'm, glad it was, I'm glad it happened, actually. It makes for a uh, realistic video. And I hope you learned a little bit. Don't be afraid, though. If you are going to use a JFJ... I suggest if you don't have some old audio CDs or anything lying around you don't care about, pick up a few cheapos from your Goodwill or your local thrift store. Give them a few extra scratches on your own. Make sure they don't work. Kind of take it on the ground, rub it a little bit, put those scuffs and marks on it. Uh, once you confirm it's going to skip, 
use those to test your resurfacing levels, how often you should do it or how long you should do it for, and uh, make those tests cost you a buck or two at the most. Not the $40 or so that I did today, but hey, it's all in uh, good learning. It's not the end of the world. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you took some positive out of this as well. As always, until I talk to you next time, stay tuned, stay positive, and keep hustling. Take care.